Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. It's spring, stuff is blossoming, the sun is out, the days are getting longer, and it's time to really use your classic cars. But there is also something called a spring clean, and I think it's time to do a bit of spring cleaning in my fleet. These are all my classic cars currently registered and road legal. The only other car I have on number plates at the moment is the daily Citroen C1 my wife drives. These are all the classic ones. I have been using the Lada Niva as a daily through the winter. Right now it's actually the Datsun that's the daily. I have other cars than this, as some of you might know. I do have the Citroen C25, it's currently unregistered, it's very expensive. I have the Citroen BX, a big project. The Saab 900 Turbo Commander, also a big project. The Austin Metro, it's getting pretty close actually to becoming roadworthy, I think. And the Ford Escort, which is a bit of a wild card. Then I have another one coming in. Actually, I have two coming in. So it's time to do something about the ones on number plates. I like to have a couple of classics on the road. So when one breaks down, I can drive the other one because sometimes, as you know, it takes a bit to fix the stuff that breaks down because you cannot always just go and buy the spare parts, the bolt for the camshaft, for instance, in this one, everything on this one, the entire engine on the Lada, for instance. So I like to have two cars on number plates all the time, but four, it's getting a bit too much. I pay tax on all of them, insur insurance on all of them, and to be honest, I'm not really using all of them enough to, to really appreciate having them. Today, I'm going to decide which one I'm going to keep. I want to, well, I don't really want to, of course I would like to keep them all, but. If I had a thousand Patreons, then maybe that could happen. But also these cars are now revived. They need to be used. If you don't use cars like this, in my experience, they will just break down again. And all of these cars are brilliant daily classic cars. There are no show condition cars. It's, they, they are perfect for someone who likes to have a classic car and use it. So today I'm going to decide which two of these four cars are going to be put up for sale. There is the A112 Abarth. I think this is the car I've owned for the longest time in my life. And I have owned a lot of cars, but I tend to only keep the maximum two years. This one I actually sold and bought back. Uh, I restored the engine, rebuilt the engine a while back. I fixed a lot of rust. There's loads of stuff still wrong with it. I really like this car. The Lada Niva is finally back on the road. It's been quite a struggle with this one. It was supposed and it was my winter driver, but it broke down quite a lot. I think I have gotten all the loose ends pretty much sorted now. The engine was rebuilt due to loss of oil pressure. Uh, all the gears are now working because I put in another gearbox. It's slightly noisy on the bearing side, so all is not well. But at the moment, it's actually working pretty well. This has always been a dream for me to try to own. Uh, I got it. I bought it right after selling my Fiat Panda 4x4, which I thought it was kind of the same. But in reality, it's two very different beasts. They are both of them are quite small and 4x4, but the similarities kind of stop there. But it's a nice rugged car. And this especially is a rough one. Mechanically, it's pretty well now. Also rust-wise, it's pretty well. It's one of the very early ones, so it's amazing it's EV, that it even exists. But it's rough with the painting and the cage on the on the roof and all that. It's you need you need to be the kind of person who likes that kind of stuff. But a roof rack, roof tent or something like that, it would be an awesome hunting vehicle. The Datsun 120Y has been a, quite a big surprise for me because I actually only bought this car to fix it up and sell it. You all know that I really like fixing cars wrenching and all that that's my kind of thing i also love driving cars but it's actually being in the garage fixing stuff up that is the most fun so i bought this to have something to wrench in that didn't need a lot of work rust wise it was only the mechanical bits and then i was actually just planning on selling it but um then i got it on number plate and really fell in love with this car because it drives awesome it gets kind of good mileage it's at least possible for it to get a good mileage at the moment, I'm only receiving around 13, maybe 14 kilometers per liter. 
but that gotta be down to some adjustment because it should should be possible to get at least 16 kilometers per liter on this one another really nice thing about this is that it got a trailer hitch it's my only car currently able to pull a trailer which i actually kind of need quite often so that's a really nice thing about the datsun and then there is the royal part of the fleet the austin princess 2200 hls automatic <laughs> the princess is the car from my childhood not this model not this color even not this engine setup or anything but a lot of my childhood was on the back seat of a princess so when this one came up in a garden it was living in a tent for quite a long time i was i really couldn't say no i really wanted to try to drive one of these myself because i have been sitting on the driver's seat as a kid with that big steering wheel many times but of course i never drove it so when the possibility arrived i just had to take it to be honest expecting to just drive it for a while and maybe selling it because it is not really my kind of car to be honest <laughs> in reality i really like cars from the 80s gti hot hatches executive fast cars from the 80s and stuff like that 70s cars is not really my thing which is weird considering all the cars right now are from the 70s by design actually uh, the lancia is the <laughs> is the youngest one at the bunch it's from 85 but they but they started making them back in the 70s. So all of the cars are 70s in design. But I'm surprised about this car a lot, actually. I really like to drive it. I got it on number plates. I had some issues with it. You've, you've all been a part of that. I just got the heater working two days ago now, and now everything pretty much is working rather well on this one. I took it on the highway the other day at motorway speeds, around 110, maybe 120 kilometers per hour. Um, it really did that well. I got 11.5 kilometers per liter out of that trip, which is really surprising me because this is a double carb, SU carb, uh, six cylinder, 2200 engine. I was expecting around nine, maybe 10 kilometers per liter. So it's better than expected, at least. It's an automatic also. That is sucking a lot of power and an economy out of the, uh, of the lump, of course. So that's better than expected. On shorter trips, I haven't measured yet, but I don't think it's very good. But I'm driving this a lot. Actually, since getting this on number plates, I haven't driven the Datsun. Welcome to the interior of the Datsun. I still need to clean the interior, by the way. But it's a nice place to be. When it's cold, it's a bit stumbling, but once it's hot, it runs beautifully. Let's drive it. Hello. Take a look at the fields. That one on the left side is going to be completely yellow within a week. It's a really nice time. I sometimes wonder why I'm not living in a country with warm weather all year long. And this is why, because that transition, it, uh, it, it's doing something really great for my mind and my, my mental state. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be without, to be honest. But as mentioned, the Datsun is surprising me a lot. I like this car way more than I thought I would. Um, in a way, and it might sound weird, it feels like a little sports car, especially the gear stick lever layout. is really sporty in my opinion. The trailer hitch is another plus because it's nice to be able to, to use my trailer. And it's just driving lovely. It's only a four-speed, but it doesn't really matter much. But as mentioned, I have not been driving this car really since the Princess got its number plates. I'm driving the Princess all the time. So when, when it comes to the decision whether to keep this or sell it, I have actually decided that this one is going to be sold. I know I hate selling my cars, of course, but it is 
opening up new opportunities for getting other cars on the road. I am going to miss the trailer hitch, I'm gonna be honest. But to keep a car just because of that is also a bit silly. And uh, I got the BX and the Saab 900 Turbo, which also got trailer hitches, and I'm going to fix them up next. So in a short while, I will have another car, another car with a hitch and another car that I would have, have to decide to sell. At that point, we'll see. But I'm going to put this car up for sale. And I know some of you really won't like that, but it's just the way it is. And this is going to be a brilliant daily classic for someone who likes to, to own stuff like this. I'm pretty sure it's going to have a brilliant life from here on out. Say hello to the interior of the princess. It's a bit of a bank waltz sound when you close the doors in this one, especially comparing it to the Datsun. The Datsun is a bit of a tin box comparing it to this. It feels that way at least. This is currently the nicest place to be in the four cars that I own. Of course, because I cleaned this out, I didn't really do it on the others, but the seatings and all that is just, it's just another thing. Let's fire it up and take it for a spin. A bit of choke. A bit more choke. There we go. A little less choke. That should do it. Woo! <clears throat> so the Princess is just such a lovely car to drive. Now the heater is working, it's getting quite hot in here. And to be honest, I always disliked cars with automatic gearboxes because I thought it would take away the pleasure of driving. And to a certain extent, it does. But in a car like this, it really adds to the cruising sensation of just wafting along with a cup of coffee maybe and just experience the scenery and just enjoy, enjoy the drive, really. It fits this car really well. As mentioned, this was a car that I couldn't really say no to trying to experience to own because I have so many memories in the back seat of one of these. And the, the chance of actually being behind the steering wheel was a, was a big temptation. And also the stuff that was wrong with this barn find or tent find of a car was really interesting. It's really hard to get parts for this car, so I had to do so much stuff myself. Fixing the suspension, the hydro gas suspension, making my own pipes and all that has been a fun experience. And every time I need to do something on this car, it's a bit different than a lot of other cars that I worked on. It is a quirky car and I like that. It is very Citroen-like. It's very British, of course, and it's just, it's something else. Turn to the left, turn to the left, please to the, yes, to the left, nice. We're going right, in case you were wondering. And it's not a fast car, but still, it gets up and goes up to speed in a very smooth manner. So it feels adequate, I think is the word. And to be honest, this is my best car in the fleet of the four ones that I'm showing you right now. When it comes to longer trips, the Lada is horrible on long trips. The Datsun is all rightish on long trips, but it's lacking the fifth gear when it comes to high speed cruising. Uh, this is not a lot better because it's a uh, three speed maybe, I think. Gearbox is really low geared, but the engine is not that noisy, so it doesn't really matter. And the Lancia is all right for long trips. It's just a bit bumpy and uh, yeah. 
I think the mark speed on the Lancia is pretty much the same as the Princess. So it's a bit of a surprise to be honest, but I'm going to keep the Princess for now. Because I really like it, and I, I like to use it through the summer. It's really nice that everything works in this car. I got a good stereo, I got a heater that works. The noise level is not that high. It's the best of the bunch, bunch that I have at the moment, at least. And um, it's just a nice experience. So I'm gonna keep the Princess, for now at least. Who knows what happens when the, when the next car I fix up gets number plates. For instance, the Saab 900 Turbo Commander is going to be a challenge for the princess, for the princess when it comes to deciding which of them to keep. But that will be in the future at least. For now, I'm going to keep this one. Uh, I think it's time to do a little kick down test just for the fun of it. This is, it is pretty quick for 70 cars, to be honest, for a car from the 70s, to be honest, especially with the automatic gearbox. That is a bit of get up and go. Nice. Welcome to the flimsy world of Lancia A112 ABBA. I have a problem with this car. Well, actually I have a few. One thing is that the windscreen washer function is not working. There is other stuff. I got some alignment issues that I would like to fix. I got a lot of rust still that I need to fix. Um, but that's not the main issue that I have with this car. There is one big problem with this car because I owned this for quite a while, then I sold it, then I bought it back. And now I owned it once again for quite a while. So it's the record of all time when it comes to owning a car over time in my, in my world. And, uh, and why is that a problem? It's not really a problem, but I actually don't like being too attached to a, to a car I don't want to end up having a lot of cars that I don't really use, but it's too attached to, to be able to sell. I do really get invested in my cars, both financially, but also emotionally. I really feel attached to cars, to be honest, but I don't want a situation where I don't want to sell them just because I owned them for a long time, or just because I had some kind of special adventure in a car or something like that it's just it's just not for me i know a lot of people have have a relationship with their cars like that and i totally respect it i just don't want to to do that myself i don't want to feel bad because i sell a certain car or something like that and i'm slowly getting into that category with this one because it really feels weird even thinking about selling this car because it feels a bit like an extension of my person because I've had so many experience in this car. So that is pointing towards selling the Lancia. But then I do something like this and then, ah, I love this car. I think this has been one of the best daily classics I've ever owned. That might sound weird because it's not very comfortable. It's not extremely fast. It's not very spacious. It is not extremely cheap to run or anything like that, but it just ticks off all my boxes except 4x4. It's really not very good in the, in the rough. But other than that, it gets really good mileage. I am getting around 15 to 16 kilometers per liter in this one. It's very surprising. It is powerful to the point that it's fast considering the size, the engine size, 
and uh, the age of the car, of course, you don't really feel you need more power. It got five gears, which is really nice. It makes it possible to ride this at high speeds, 130 even, without a big hassle. That's also nice. And I still have a lot of stuff I would like to fix on this also. So uh, I have decided that this car is going to stick around for a bit longer at least. I'm not going to put the, uh, the Abarth up for sale. Not in this round at least. Oh, it feels so wrong even talking about selling this car. I am afraid I'm slowly falling into that thing that I'm trying to avoid. But listen to it! It would be nice to fix the third gear. It's making a crunching sound each and every time I change quickly into gear. I've forgotten about that because I haven't driven this in the winter time. So it's actually the first trip of the spring in the Lancia. And seriously, it is such a blast to drive this car. I would love to do something about the interior though. The seat fabric on my seat is completely disintegrated. It's going to be difficult to find another seat, but I will have to do something soon because it's really bad now. Maybe just some seat covers, but I really dislike seat covers. We'll see what happens. It's a 1.0 engine. It's a pushrod engine and it's making 70 horsepower. Not only that, it's, it's doing that in a really, in a really wonderful, wonderful way and with a wonderful sound. So, uh, so let's just get to 80 a bit quickly. <laughs> this car's Woo. it's a keeper welcome to the very black world of the Lada Neva if this ladder was music, it would be black metal. I'm pretty sure of it. I have done so much work. Oh, it's not working because it's slanted. I've done so much work to the ladder since I found it. As you all know, the engine died a while back. Now it's working again. Oh, I'm keep on forgetting that. I'm just going to put this down on level ground. So the seatbelt works. The seatbelt is not supposed to be able to be pulled out if you flip your car. So that's the reason why it didn't pull out. I have taken a couple of drives in this after the rebuild. It's working just fine. The gearbox is a bit noisy. It's a noisy car anyway, so I hope you will be able to hear what I'm telling you. But it's driving pretty well, but this will be the first test drive with you guys. There we go. power than I was expecting. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> now I know why it was so fast when I drove up that hill and so noisy. I'm in low range at the moment because I had to go up that steep hill back in my garden. So that's the reason for the quite quick acceleration. This is more normal.
So the Lada is working just fine again. And it's, it's something different comparing it to all my other cars. It's really fun. And even though this is really a different car to all my other cars and really fun, I don't really think it fits what I need from a car at the moment because it doesn't have a trailer hitch. It's really using a lot of fuel. It's not fast. It's good in the rough, of course, but I'm not going to go in the rough for, for the next year at least. There will be no snow or anything like that. And next year, when winter comes, then maybe the Citroën BX with the 4x4 is working. And that would be uh, nice for the winter. So I have decided that the Lada Niva should get a new owner who is going to use it for what it's meant for. Maybe taking it on a camping trip, maybe using it as a hunting vehicle, or maybe just going to off-road events and stuff like that. I think my journey with this car is over. But I can feel driving it now that I really have to not drive it too much because I'm falling in love with it pretty quickly. I just have been a bit tired of all the breaking down stuff on this car. But I think now it should be pretty much good. Hopefully for a long time. <laughs> and I never get tired of, of seeing other, other drivers' faces when I drive past them. <laughs> That's fun. So yes, this means that I'm going to put the Datsun up for sale and I'm going to put the Lada Niva up for sale and I'm going to keep the Princess and the Abarth. I actually made a small post on Instagram with a vote to see which cars you guys think that I should keep. And I turned out to uh, disagree slightly with that. A lot of you thought that I should keep the Lancia. That's nice, because I totally agree. The next one on the list was the Lada. A lot of you think I should keep the Lada. And then it was the Datsun and then it was the Princess. There was not a lot of love for the princess, at least not on Instagram, but I really like the princess for now. So I'm going to keep the princess and the Abarth, and I know a lot of you would disagree, but this is just the way it is on this channel. A part of me just hopes no one buys them, because then I have to keep them. But on the other hand, I really dislike knowing classic usable cars are just standing in a barn for no real reason, to be honest. These cars need to be used. They need to be enjoyed. There are so many possible experiences in these cars that I really think should be experienced. And I actually already put the Lada up for sale and someone went to look at it. It's a rough car. It's hard to describe it. So some people get a bit afraid when they see it, I think. It's a pretty good base, but it's a running project. A guy went to see it who, uh, we're planning on taking a trip to Siberia. <laughs> and that's exactly the kind of person I would like to sell a car like this to, because it needs to go out there and do some stuff. And for the next years, I'm going to be at home, to be honest. Wrenching on old, rusty, moldy cars. That's my future. And that is exactly what I want to do. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.